Bubbly Steve is available for pre-order at shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. You've got less than a month to pre-order this 15-inch plushie. Check them out. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And there's been a disturbance in the force. Yeah, the backlash has begun. Begun the backlash has, let's put it that way. Yeah, Disney fans are not happy with the price of the uh, Galactic Star Cruiser Luxury Resort Hotel Bang. warping thing. Uh, you know, we talked about it yesterday. You're looking at at least $6,000 for a family of four to go LARPing for Starting. Like, starting. Starting. And that's if you have one child under 10. If you have but their kids are over 10, then it's gonna be more. Depending on the cabin you pick, it's going to be more. Like again, and that's for two days during a weekday. And the time frame they gave that was like a three week time frame that those prices are valid for those three weeks. Yeah, so this is going to be one of Disney's most expensive offerings. And uh, again, we have to ask who it's for because we're talking sequel trilogy era. Mm -hmm. We're talking outrageously overpriced. All these things are things people mentioned, by the way. Yeah, and uh, everybody's slamming them. You don't have to wonder. You think they're gonna do it for the holidays? They'll do Life Day at the at the the Star Cruiser Hotel. Oh my God, they would, wouldn't they? I'm I'm betting. They would. Uh, I'm just saying. They also want you to buy very expensive outfits so you so you fit in. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. And there's been a lot of backlash in general, it's spilling over, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. But mm -hmm. um, Insider doing another article about how Disney World is not worth it right now. Mm -mm. You can't even, people, I have people down there that are like, you can't even walk or so many people. I mean, I think it's same for uni right now too, but um, it's just, it's just getting ridiculous. And uh, you know, we have a uh, Gizmodo that was all about this Star Cruiser Hotel and they're like, this is absolutely ridiculous. The price is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And these were some of the news outlets that were defending Galaxy's Edge. We have to remind you, when Galaxy's Edge was announced, a lot of these LARPing experiences were supposed to be included in standard, you know, basic admission. Standard right. Admission. The the lightsaber train, the lightsaber, you know, the, the character interaction, the restaurant with the with the Star Wars characters, all those things were supposed to be available to everyone at Galaxy's Edge when it was open. That was one of the things people were excited about. And then when it opened, most of that wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna talk about that before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 228,000 subs. Uh, thank you for the support. Geeky put this story up earlier today uh, talking about the backlash. And you've been out on Twitter, and it's it's uh -huh. not pretty. Oh, the comments are beautiful. This is actually the, the Disney World announcement. One thing I want to point out that I've noticed is... The problem here, too, is the fact that not many people are talking about this. Yeah. So even the big accounts, like the Disney World one and some of the big blogs, when they put out about it, they're not getting many comments. And when they are getting comments, for every one good comment, there's dozens of bad comments. So it's already, already skewed definitely negative to positive. But it's also very interesting to note people aren't talking about it overall in general. Like, they're not really getting involved. I, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think one is, you know, it, we're talking about this hotel. It's, it was announced years ago. It's based on the sequel trilogy. I mean, you're People not bring that up a lot. Yeah, you're not going to get now if this were, you know, uh, original trilogy and there's a chance of like Darth Vader crashing your dinner party. That would actually be kind of cool. But Kylo Ren, nobody gives a shit. And basically, I mean, what it is, I'm going to tell you. Basically, what it is, it seems like these these. Especially, you know, I love how they schedule out the magical moments that could happen that you know something is going to happen then unexpected. Um, they're mostly like, oh, hey, we're sending you on a mission. So when you go to Batu for five hours that you can complete this mission when you're there. So I'm like, people are going in on a bus. I'm sorry, their transport to Batu. And they get right on Rise of the Resistance and they're going to get to run Million Falcon Smugglers Run and they're part of this mission. But they're only there for a few hours and then you're brought back to the ship. And somebody else pointed out, it's not even two days. Like this is a two-day price. You check in at one o'clock on one day. You're there um, not even two days because by the time you check out, which would be technically like the third day, um, it's like at nine in the morning, 9.30. That's not even two full days. Yeah. You know, it's not even two full days. For four to six thousand dollars, right? I mean, holy. So, 
Snakes. This was the official announcement on Twitter. Um, the Walt, the Walt Disney World. They've only gotten about uh, not many, not many comments on this one. They have more quote tweets than they do comments. But here we're going to look at some of these. Um, I'm talking about the lightsaber, but the comments here are be are beautiful. Um, it's there and it's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I want it yet. No, we can't afford that. A lot of people saying that. Yeah. Um, how are those bunk sizes for adults? Because the renters look small, which we talked about that. They're very small cabins. People. Yeah. Somebody else on another blog said it's like paying for uh, like the Pop Century or one of the the value resorts. But you're getting like a value resort room that's themed with screens for this much money. Yeah, with like an iPad for a porthole you can look out and see the star field. Like just go get an iPad screensaver, sit it on your nightstand. Yeah. There you go. They're just like going on here. Um, there's a lot of people talking about. I have some actual some more comments here on 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 the post. But um, very excited for this extremely rich and not so rich, but extremely fiscally irresponsible people who will get exclusive, who will exclusively be allowed to enjoy this experience. Good for them. I hope they have fun. Um, you made an attraction custom made for a specific enthusiastic fan base, yet can't afford it. Or more accurately, are smart enough not to go into massive credit card debt to afford it. Yep. Uh, it, as if everything since episode uh, seven wasn't enough of a dumpster fire to kill off the only genuine fans the series truly had. Well, that's the thing, too. I, again, what blows my mind, and I understand that, you know, Galaxy's Edge is based on the sequel trilogy at the request of Kathleen Kennedy. Well, an Iger. An Iger. They uh, made that brain fart decision. Bad decision, because if this were original trilogy, you would have a lot of older, wealthier classic Star Wars fans that would pay to have dinner with Darth Vader and Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. You know, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. now, they're not even basing on Mandalorian, which even no, would be yeah, more popular. It's weird. Um, for the cost of a down payment on a Porsche, you can experience an out-of-the-galaxy swindling, the likes of which few in the universe have ever seen. And probably will see, because it's so expensive. Uh, my family loves Star Wars. We'll never be able to do this unless we win the lottery. Why y'all price not the middle class? Because yeah. they're after the whales. Go ahead, you can read some. Sorry, when comparing value versus cost, there is just no way any average family can justify this expense. That's because Disney doesn't want you anymore. And it only includes four hours at Galaxy's Edge. I think Disney is going to be rethinking its price structure by the end of next year. This has failure written all over. I, I joked with you. I said, it'll probably do well for like the first year or two, maybe. And then everybody who can afford to do it and wants to do it will have done it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, maybe they'll just like turn it into a, a restaurant or something. I don't know. I think it's funny because a lot of people are saying things like, well, it's a once in a lifetime experience. Exactly. For most people, it's once experience. What kind of audience, how long do you think this audience is going to last you? And it's a once in a lifetime for most people. Uh, I love this. It's cheaper to go on the maiden voyage of the Disney Wish. Yep. I know which one I'd pick. That's what they, that's what they yeah. said. Because it's like you can go on a real cruise ship for less money. Um, then this is like WW News Today put up. Oh, WW News Today actually has a lot of interaction, but they didn't get a lot of interaction on this one either. Um, intergalactic pricing to match the intergalactic hotel. I know people will pay it, but it seems to me to be put it out of the reach for lots of normal families. I, I think what happens in this case, people don't get excited for things that aren't in their their uh, field of vision, you know, like you're not going to have average people going on and on about Ferraris or luxury homes because they can't afford them. Mm -hmm. So they put it out of mind and said, like Disney trips, they always talk about planning their Disney trip, but it's always like, oh, we're going to a moderate. Maybe we'll splurge a little and go to a deluxe, and this is what we're going to do. It takes people a long time to plan those, yes. too. Disney doesn't even understand that. One thing we ran into a lot when, when we used to work with them was the fact they kept having it in their head that they could advertise something three months out, and everybody's going to drop everything they're doing and suddenly have the money to show up. Yeah. It's like most people need a little bit more lead time than yeah. three months out. Because <laughs> the middle so. class, you know, believe it or not, most of them work. So they have to give notice of their jobs. Yeah, we've seen Disney drop deals like, oh, come to Disney next week. Like, yeah, okay, sure. Sure, we'll just drop everything we're doing right, and right, fly and to Florida. Go. Yeah. Um, I think I think this price, alcohol and specialty beverages should be included. Yes, uh, food is included, but anything specialty like that is not. Here's one about the budget resort with windows. LED windows, uh -huh. yeah. My wife and I can spend seven nights at a super nice, all-inclusive resort in the Dominican Republic for around 4500 total, including flight. Um, they said it's day and a half, which I brought up. Mm -hmm. um, I said this, actually. I can almost buy my own ship for that. Um, then I, I want to go down here. Uh, my favorite comments are down here, actually. Uh, let me find it. They're talking about... 
the one part down here. Oh, I like this one too. That is why you fail. Yeah. This uh, is, this is so uh, Nathan Hartman. Uh, the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser quiz. Can you afford the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser? Yes or no? If you mark no, congratulations, you're a normal human. If you marked yes, give it a charity, you ass. Um, yeah, I do believe those Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser prices are the starting prices for weekdays. Yes, you are correct. Uh, I love this one, though. Disney writes the movie The Last Jedi, where the subplot is rich people are evil and overindulge themselves on rich planets where the poor can never hope to go. Also, Disney, check out our new Star Wars hotel, rich people only. So Disney makes their underpaid, overworked employees take a, a privilege test. While chasing the privilege? While chasing the privileged. It's, I, I mean, this none of, none of Disney's business strategy makes sense. And again, this is one of those things where... This might be a slam dunk if it were more affordable. And again, based on the original trilogy. Oh, but then they, they, they won't get as much money and they won't be able to make it exclusive for their, their whales because they're going to sell to them. I love this. Uh, and their own sample itinerary slates it for having you in, in and out in less than 48 hours. A month's rent for, or more, more for most people for less than two full days of accommodation. I mean, are we talking for, because I'm talking for a family of four. Can you imagine the kind of house you can buy a six thousand dollar a month mortgage payment? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty pretty nice house. Right. Pretty so nice. So I'm house. just like, this is insane. Um, I'll let you have this back so you can go back to the article you wanted to talk about. Well, yeah. So it's not just uh, it's not just Twitter. I mean, um, Gizmodo was calling it out. We were calling this out back when we thought it was only be three thousand ish. Yeah. So I love it. People are like, you guys are so negative. You just hate Star Wars. It's like, no, we know what they're planning. And it's going to be a disaster. And the biggest, you know, again, kick in the nuts regarding the situation is this immersion was originally planned to just be part of Galaxy's Edge all the way around. You were supposed to be able to interact with aliens, and droids. They were going to send missions. you on missions, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they decided that they were going to paywall all of this. But that paywall is much, much more expensive than anyone could have possibly imagined. And people go, get mad at us. They're like, well, you know back with, with the He-Man situation, they're like, you just want to see things fail. It's like, no, we try to send out warnings. Yeah. And the the hope is, is that they listen to the warnings and don't do dumbass things. They don't listen to the warnings and instead they come down on us, but we end up being right and then it ends up blowing up in their faces spectacularly. And if they had just effing listened to us and people like us to begin with, they wouldn't be facing all this backlash. There is more negativity around this and the prices than there is positivity. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. I, you know, I got to sit here and wonder like who, who was their focus group? Cause Disney used to actually ask their, their guests what they thought, you know, would be a good idea or what the guests were looking for. They used to do surveys and I'm like, who did they, they just sit down with like Bob Iger and be like, Hey Bob, uh, what do you think we should do? Well, a luxury getaway weekend in a Star Cruiser based on our Disney Star Wars movies. Everybody's going to want that. No, $6,000. Hell, I got that in my couch cushions. We're well, not just that. They're, yeah. they're Star Wars. And it's like, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't the market already shown you that people don't like your Star Wars? They don't. I mean, granted, this has been in development for five years, but they've had more than enough time to, to, to you know, divert something else, you know, change course here uh, as far as the, the story. They've cut attractions they've they've cut back on attractions and i I'll, I'll be honest i thought this would be one of the first things they cut with galaxy's edge not doing so well out of the gate initially and with there being so much backlash toward the sequels i thought for sure this would be something they would either rethink or they would table it. And I said I didn't, and I told you why. Because one. because they could charge a lot of money, and I was right. Because that's exactly what they're going to do. This is way worse than I thought they would oh, yeah, do. Oh, yeah, yeah. But this is, I knew they would do this, and they're already trying to upsell. Like, you can sit at the captain's table for more money, and then they're already trying to sell, well, you should be, bring costumes. You don't have costumes. That's okay. We'll have overpriced, you know, tattered robes for you to buy. And all that. <laughs> you can you buy know. a bathrobe for $400. I know. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's like a cruise line, but worse. Uh, I mean. Oh, yeah, cr cruise line's the same way. That's that's basically what this is, is a, a, it is like a cruise line. Disney cruise with the Star Wars theme. And I almost feel like they would have been better off having like a, a Star Wars level on the new cruise ship and that having that be the immersive experience or something. It, it, you know? It's stupid. But like what's funny to me, because even the, 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 the really shilly websites and YouTube channels, you know, the, the, the Mickey golf ball lickers, you know, 
even when they posted stuff about the prices, their fans were even like, whoa, what the hell? And these are the pixie dusters or the pixie dusters. The ones that send people after us on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you know who you are. I know who you are. Um, even their readers were like, whoa, what the hell? You know, so it's not just us. So take them balls and shove it where the sun don't shine. This is, this has opened up uh, a larger conversation again about the price of Disney World, you know, compared to the value proposition, which is not great at this point in time because, you know, they've, they've cut entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, they've cut hours, they've, they've cut extras, they've cut perks, everything's an upcharge. And Disney's been headed in this direction for a number of years, but the pandemic definitely hastened it. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we've even, even got, uh, you know, Insider calling out that uh, Disney World isn't worth it. No, and it's funny, today they released, not Disney World, but um, Universal released the Halloween Horror Nights, I guess, tickets and prices and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they have gone up as well. Um, so they are increased, they're not giving discounts. So they're doing it too. So they're starting to do it too, keep up the prices. And what's interesting is someone pointed out, and I agree with them, they said they never go backwards. Like when they raise this stuff up and they're like, oh, we're trying to just, you know, offset the cost until the pandemic's over or whatever. They never drop it back down. Yeah. Like they were doing this shit before the pandemic. But it's, it's very disgusting of people like Scarlett Johansson to take, to, advantage. to take advantage of people during the pandemic. Take advantage of poor Mickey Mouse. Poor Mickey Mouse. Look what you made Mickey do. You made Mickey charge poor families $6,000 to go LARPing mm -hmm. on a spaceship. Mm -hmm. Fake spaceship. Fake fake space. With fa with a fake shuttle that's just a bus with a... Like, I mean, this is like a, the plot of a movie. What was that one movie? You what Was it Austin Land? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that movie. But that's what this reminds that me of. That is what this is like. It's, that's exactly what it's like. It's like Austin Land, but with Star Wars. You get that's on the bus and you go to the town. Everybody's supposed to play the part, even though they're not really feeling it. And I wonder if we're going to get some uh, some uh, alien bartenders that maybe are, are, are going to you know step out of character every once in a while. To... Well, someone joked about that. They said... So you can't wait to get in your line for your exclusive lightsaber experience that everybody gets and you watch the person in front of you get it, then it's your turn. And by like the third or fourth time, the cast members are like, ah, oh, shit, you know? So. Well, that's what happened with Rise of the Resistance. You could tell they were just kind of like, I mean, you saw how happy they were on day one. They're like, mm -hmm. hey, everybody, we're going to do this whole thing. And then by the time we got there, it was like, what, a couple months after it opened. They're like, yeah, 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 you're, you're Some of them were still good. Some of them were good, but a lot of people were like, yeah, hey, we're the bad guys. We captured you. Go get you. In the cook at the ship. Stand yeah, over there. Go. And then the one guy like popped his head like, get out of the ship now. This part where you get out of the ship. Get out of the ship. He did! Get your ass out of the ship. Get the he fuck didn't say, out of the ship. No, he didn't do that. <laughs> but he didn't say basically like, you know, okay, go. Because nobody knew where to go. They were just like standing around well, looking. And somebody was talking the other, just like, the other day too, like yesterday. And they said that, you know, I thought it was back there running everything, but apparently yesterday they weren't on Rise of the Resistance. They were only, they weren't riding, running through the whole, all the queues leading up to it. And we've mentioned um, the traction is like, they, oh, it's a 20 minute ride. Yeah, because they have all these queues and, and story that you go through before you get to the actual ride. He said they just put people on the ride with no context. And that's what they were doing during the pandemic. Yeah. So you were like, here's the five minute ride with no context. And you're like, what the flip's going on? And it's kind of like that. It's a five-minute ride with a 17-minute queue. Yeah, basically. That's, that's where they get the, you know, and the queue's more impressive than the ride. I don't um, know. The ride's pretty cool in places. I think it's, it's pretty okay. cool. It's okay. It's okay. I would like it more if it was classic Star Wars. And it would be so easy to fix that ride to make it classic Star Wars. I think that was the intention. Same with the, the hotel. I mean, for all our talk of, you know, it's a bad idea for the sequels, Disney may realize that and be like, we're not going to get repeat customers unless we change the experience. So it might be like a year from now, it's like, oh, we're going to do original trilogy. Oh, we're going to do Mandalorian. Yeah, I don't see how they can just keep it the same. They're going to no. have to shift, the, you know, change up the stories, change up the, you know, every so often. Then you might get people to come back. Because like you said, and, and what I've mentioned too, people were saying it's a, a lifetime, once in a lifetime. Once, one, one and done, once. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. It was really a bad idea. But anyway, was there anything else you want to talk about with this article? No, just that there, there's a lot of talk about how expensive Disney is becoming. And it's so hard, too, now with the park pass reservations yep. and all the guidelines and stuff they're trying to push in. And they're not getting rid of them either. Like, they're planning on keeping them for a long time so they can control you even more. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I will say, you know, the last time we were down in Florida was last fall. We were, we were actually going to go down here in the not-too-distant future, but, uh, you know, we were going to go, like, next week, but because yeah. of the, the, you know, there's some illness rates going up, but not even that. The flights keep getting canceled on people. Yeah. And we don't want to go down there and be like, well, now we're stuck down here and have to drive the whole way back. 
Yeah, but uh, last time we were down there, we did go to both Disney World and, and Universal. And I have to tell you, I thought Universal was the better experience overall. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said that Universal is still the better value. And I think what's well, going to... that's true. Yeah, and I think what's going to happen, especially when Nintendo comes, and Epic Universe comes, is that Universal is going to go after all those middle-class families that Disney left in the dust I, I decades agree. ago. It's going to be interesting to see how the if the balance of power shifts. I also want to point out too that uh, just the other day that Disney Disneyland Paris started their you know paid you know Fast Pass program, mm-hmm. and some of the prices were like ten to twenty bucks per person per ride to get a Fast Pass on that attraction. And you know damn well they're going to bring it over here, and that's what they're going to oh, do yeah. here to even yeah. m- charge you more. Yep. Yep, it's uh, yeah, it, it's just it, it's going to get to the place where people are going to stop going, and then supply and demand. You know, they'll have to. Drop. Well, they're not going to be much of demand here soon. No, and this happened before. Uh, I remember Disney became relatively expensive. Was it back in the late '90s, early 2000s, and then travel dropped off because of 9/11, and the economy wasn't doing so great. So they had to actually uh, put Disney on sale. People talked about the Walmarting of Disney, mm-hmm. and they it did happened. constantly having deals constantly oh they had one that was great if you, your kids go for free yeah i mean that we, we took advantage of that one yeah but then you know again what happens those guests a lot of times don't spend the money per capita per capita p-cap 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 they don't they don't have the p-cap and uh disney wants to get as much blood out of every stone that enters that park as they can they squeeze so, your stones yeah because they don't want you coming in eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches they which want you're you- allowed to do for now you Wait. can bring food with you for now. Wait. But yeah, just give them time. But yeah, they, they, they want to get every bit they can get out. And even even when they had those deals, I mean, it was a little trashier in the parks. I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to be rude, but it was like you had people changing diapers on the street and leaving them lay there and stuff yeah. like that. That actually did happen. But I don't think the lines were as bad as they are now. When they're charging more. Yeah, they weren't. They it weren't. was like it, it was it was much easier than it is now. I mean, it's just getting ridiculous. It is getting ridiculous. And this might be the uh, the straw that breaks the, the camel's back for a lot of people. Even if they don't intend to do this, the fact that Disney took this concept and they, they put it out of the price range for most people are going to make people pissed off enough to just be like, I'm not giving Disney any money because this is what we were supposed to get with Galaxy's Edge and they paywalled it. Nobody can afford this and piss off. Yeah. You know, and, so um, people aren't happy, and we called this. I want to point it out again. We said this is going to happen, and I just find it very interesting because it seems more people are not happy than are happy about it. Yes, indeedy. All right, so we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.